Okay, so hello everyone. Welcome to uh, this week's installment of the Paleo Perks Seminar Series for Early Career Researchers in the Paleo Sciences. Um, today, we will be hearing a talk from Yi Yang Cho, uh, who is a part of the Collection Management Department at the National Taiwan Museum. And he'll be talking about crocodilian fossils from Taiwan, unearthing extinct reptilian giants from the eastern margin of Eurasia. Okay, so we'll start out with um, just some basic welcomes and announcements here, uh, and then we will get started with the talk. After the talk, there'll be a moderated question and answer session. And after the talk, uh, there will be a brief tea time with the speaker, uh, which is a more informal uh, way to just get to know each other and have some conversations there. Uh, so uh, during the talk, if you have any questions, please send those questions directly to the Zoom account uh, called questions at Paleo Perks post, uh, because uh, when you send those questions there, we can then uh, more easily kind of facilitate the question and answer session. So, so uh, as just a bit of a reminder or kind of some information for people who have not joined us before, the Paleo Perks uh, Committee values the participation of all folks interested in the paleo sciences. Please remember to abide by our code of conduct during today's seminar. Uh, additionally, please mute yourself during the duration of the talk. Uh, it should be that uh, you are muted by default, but if somehow something is wrong and you become unmuted, please go ahead and mute yourself so we can be respectful to the speaker. Uh, you can, as I said, ask questions by chatting directly with the questions that Paleo Perks host, or additionally, you can use the raise hand function. Additionally, if you have any technical issues, please uh, report those uh, via the chat to the questions that Paleo Perks host as well. We have closed captions built into Zoom. You should be able to use the CC button to show or hide them. And additionally, uh, if you have any exceptional early career researchers who you'd like to nominate to give a talk, uh, please, uh, you can do that via this link, which will be shared in the chat. Additionally, every week we like to collect some feedback uh, to collect demographic information, which is totally anonymous uh, and optional, but it is encouraged because it can help us kind of develop this seminar uh, in you know the right direction. So you can also find that in the chat window, and we appreciate it if you fill that out. Additionally, one extra announcement is that this week we are actually uh, this is the kind of the last week to join to apply the Paleo Perks Committee. Um, the deadline for that is November 8th, but essentially what that means by joining the committee, you can contribute to this initiative that supports early career researchers in the paleo sciences. Uh, you can work with an exceptional group of people to build something you're excited about, uh, including myself and the other hosts. Um, and you get to meet and interact with speakers from around the world. And additionally, you get to expand your understanding of what the paleo sciences are and all of the different subdisciplines that uh, the paleo sciences encompass. So again, those applications are due November 8th, 2023. We push that deadline back a little bit more. Uh, so uh, go ahead and submit those applications. Um, and even if you maybe aren't 100% sure that you're a great fit, we encourage everyone to apply. So uh, that application link will be shared in the chat um, and it's also listed there below. So a bit more about today's speaker, Yi Yang Cho. Uh, he did his Bachelor of Science at the Department of Earth Sciences and the Department of Life Sciences uh, as a double degree at National Cheng Kung University, and then went on to do a Master of Science at the Institute of Ecology and Evolutionary Biology at the National Taiwan University. Currently, he's a project assistant uh, in the Collection Management Department at National Taiwan Museum. Uh, and so with that, we're really excited uh, for this talk, and um, you can take it away, Yi Yang. Hey. Hello, uh, thank you, Isaiah, and I'm very happy being invited by Paleo Perks to give this talks. And today my topic is about to introduce everyone. The, my research is about crocodilian fossil from Taiwan. And I think this topic is very interesting for Taiwan paleontology because in nowadays Taiwan, there are no extant crocodilia living in Taiwan. Let's look at the, let's look, Sorry, uh, let's look at the current distribution of crocodilian in the global. You can see their distribution are uh, restricted to mid to low latitude. The this region climates are like tropical to subtropical uh, 
climate and like the extant crocodilia cannot move uh, to a high latitude region because the cooler, cooler climate has restricted their their uh, survivorship. And if we take a look at the uh, older time, you can see that the crocodilian paleodiversity, they have reached a peak in Miocene, maybe due to the warm temperature at that at that moment. But however, after the mousing is its end, you can see their diversity is declined. But even if we see the Pleistocene and Holocene fossil records of crocodilian, you can see that they have uh, distributed in global. And also there at this moment, they have still present on East Asia, including Japan and Taiwan. However, in nowadays Japan and Taiwan, there's no living crocodilian. It seems like their diversity in East Asia, in this region, in this region, have declined in this period. For example, if we uh in the nowadays East Asia, there's only one uh crocodilian, extant crocodilian species, the Chinese alligator, alligator sinensis. And if we look at the paleo distribution or the historical distribution of A sinensis, you can see that they have distributed, they're not only distributed in the Yangtze River, but also like distributed in Taiwan. The middle one is the fossil discovered from Taiwan. And also they have present on Southern China and also even into Southeast Asia, Thailand. And also they have moved, no moved northward to the Northern China uh, in the area around the Yellow River. And also they their fossil have discovered on Japan. On the, the right one is from is from Japan fossil. And more, moreover, out, apart from alligator sinensis, in East Asia in the in the past, we, we have two uh, large crocodiles, but they were they were gone, they were extinct now. One is the Tota Fumiamakikensis from the Middle Pleistocene Japan. And the other one is more interesting, is from the Holocene China, is the Hanyusuka sinensis just being described in 2022. And uh, interestingly is that this both large species they have shown a unique character among the crocodilian is that when you look at their upper snout I mean in the maxilla region you can see that their 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 tooth development in the seventh one you can see there's a large tooth development in the among this taxon and this character has have not been observed in other crocodilian taxon. And in Taiwan, and for for now, we we have uh, we have discovered uh, at least four crocodilian fossil specimen, including the alligator sinensis we mentioned I mentioned before, and also there's the Miocene one, the Penghu Sucas penny, it is which discovered from the Penghu Islands, and today we are mainly focused on the fossil which discovered from the southern Taiwan Chouzhen. It's the Tomis Toma Taiwanicus. And, and another tone of female species. And I, I have to note that the, the lower one, the tone of female specimen, it was, it was the first discovered crocodilian specimen from Taiwan. It was discovered in 1930, 1936. And at that moment, the discoverer Tokunaka didn't know what this spe species is it. And he just speculated maybe it belongs to a, like close to the extant Foscario or the Gario. And until and this specimen was considered being destroyed during the World War II. However, they, uh, in Japan in 2018, they rediscovered this specimen. And this specimen, the stata is uh is is uh is is it looks like the same with the Tokugana description. So they think this is this one is the same specimen and it seems like it belongs to Tonha Fimea. And, and, and another one discovered in Southern, Taina, Southern Taiwan, Tainan, is the Tomisama Taiwanicus. It's the first named Texan from Taiwan. At that moment, Shikama was, was named it. Uh, he, he thinks that this specimen should belong to the same genus with the extant Foscario. And, and recently, we have uh, re examined this specimen, include, along with the, another specimen left from Tainan. The two we men we mentioned, these two specimen, yeah, from I I told uh, I said that from China, you can see uh, it's from the uh, on the pet on the previous record. It seems like this fossil was discovered during the riverbed, but 
in our recent field work, it seems like this specimen maybe maybe this location are not the in situ size of this specimen. But we can speculate that maybe the specimen are discovered like in this area. And this area, the formation is maybe is is cheating formation. Its geological age is from 0 0.8 million years ago to 0 0.4 million years ago. And in the past, uh, Taiwan has discovered many vertebrate fossils in this area, including the rhino, red nestle rhinos, and also Sabertus tiger, homo serian, and also uh, in a large uh, elephant, including stegodon here. And in the Shikama, when Shikama naming the, the Tomistoma Taiwanica, this taxon, in the diagnosis part, he has uh, noted that Tomistoma Taiwanica is much related to the Tomistoma Makikansis, another taxon from Japan. However, if we look at this taxon, you will find that uh, this taxon at that moment is called uh, Tomistoma Makikansis, is now transferred to the new, uh, the new genus Tota Femia Makikansis. So this is curious us because it seems like the to to Tomistoma Taiwanica, the taxonomy status is very curious. And even in the when the total female genus are established, the author, Aoki, also uh, writing in the paper said that, I believe that Tomisoma Taiwanica should be assigned to total female and its specific status must be revised. So it's, it's, uh, it led us very curious and, and re-examine the specimen. We want to know whether it's the same genus with Tomisoma or it should belong to the extinct total female. And this is the, Thai specimen of Tomistoma Taiwanica. You can see the Thai specimen is consists of six pieces, and including like the frontal peri uh, parieto, uh, snout, and also stentary and tooth. But however, when we uh, re-examine this specimen, we found something interesting because we found that the one uh, Shikama uh recognizes a parieto it's honestly a smaller frontal of the from the, from maybe another smaller individual because we we can see in the ventral part we can see there's a there's a crystal cranial frontalis there's a ridge and it seems that there's a in the center is a tunnel for the for a nerve 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 canal to open and also in the dentary part we also found that another another specimen which previously recognized a uh, middle dentary is anterior dentary should also belong to middle dentary because when we look at the medial side, there's also a cranial called primordial canal. And in extern Tomistoma gario, you can see this canal at the when when it reached the the anterior tips of the dentary, you can see this tunnel is on the very uh, very near to the dors dorsal side, but in our specimen is on the mid middle part, so we think maybe it should be lost to the mid middle middle part of the dentary. Last, as we can see that this six type specimen may at least belong to two or three uh, individual, and one is more larger, and another one is more smaller, and maybe belongs to a juvenile. Then we look at, although you can see that this type specimen uh, looks very like a uh, fragment fra fragmentary, but we still try to recognize uh, its affinity to whether it is more, more like a Tomistoma or Tomistoma. And then we found that for the orbital, for the, in the frontal part, when, when we, when we uh, compare the orbit shape, you can see that in our specimen, the, the medial size of the orbital is medially curved and the posterior posterior lateral margin of the prefrontal is, is, is also curving. But however, if you look at the extensal mistoma, you can see that there's some anger into in the their medial medial uh medial orbit. And also if you look at in the anterior anterior view, you can also see that in our specimen and also other East Asia uh, extinct taxon, you can see our uh our orbital margin is more like it's only slightly slightly upturned, but not very prominent. But compared with X turn to Mr. Ma, you can see the upturn is very obvious. So I think we think uh, this character should exclude it from belongs to Tomis Toma, rather rather uh it should rather belongs to Total Female. 
And then we also try to compare whether the Taiwan materials are the same species with total female marchicinesis or it should belong to a new species. And so uh, because we have two uh, these two snout, also, all of them are from Chojin, Tainan, the, the right one uh, is, is now uh, curated in the Waseda University. It's also the one of the first crocodilian fossil discovered in Taiwan and was once a uh, recognize a uh, destroy in World War II, but, but rediscovery. And we found that in both species, there's some, uh, the occlusal pitch pattern uh, differ from total female machicansis. You can see their medial occlusal pitch uh, in this, in the, uh, this part are all, are all in the crocodilian anterior rostrum. The mid, they have some, occlusal pitch is um, situated more medially, but when we observe, um, Total female marchicinesis on the three one, the third one, you third picture you can see the uh, the the occlusal piece pattern are different because uh, it's more like medial laterally oriented and not like our specimen are only situated in the medial part, and also we compare the rostrum and uh, shape to other East Asian uh, extingario including Pongusuchus and Hyusuchus. However, our specimen are in the especially at the level of the seventh alveoli. You can see there's a uh, obvious uh, and large. And but however, if you look at the Hansukus and Tonsukus, their rostrum are more gradual, not like total female have this uh, prominent enlargement. Last based on this character, we think that uh, to Tomistoma Taiwanicus should reassign to total female Taiwanicus uh, as a new combination. And more interesting is that after though the tight spacements of total female Taiwanicus is very fragment, when we compare to the whole type of total female machicinesis, you can see the 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 spacement on SMTP nine one two two. I mean, I think we think uh its size is comparable to the whole type of T machicinesis, and this is the uh, this is the picture I hold the cast of the T machicinesis. You can see how large it is. And so, so we think maybe uh, total female Taiwanicus is size almost as large as T machicinesis. And how large is T machicinesis? Based on the uh, vertebrate base estimation from Ijima and Kubo, you can see that in vertebrate base total length, they estimated T machicinesis are six to six point three two meters. And based on the skull mandible based total length, it can even reach up to seven meters. And they also uh, estimated another taxon from Taiwan, the Pongosuchus. And you can see, even based on the vertebrae base, the Pongosuchus have, can also reach to four, uh, about 4.5 meters long. And this, this crocs can represent the largest reptiles in Taiwan's natural history, because uh, in nowadays Taiwan, we think, uh, I think the, 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 the largest reptile are the, the snakes, yeah, python. And, and also because uh, in, until now in Taiwan, because the, our geological uh, uh, geological bed is more younger, until now we didn't find any non-avian dinosaur. So this croc has represent the the largest uh, largest reptile until now we have found in Taiwan. And because of this, we also uh, propose uh, some um, interesting scenario because like in the past, uh, total female only discovered in Japan, but it's, 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 uh, it's unusual because some we all know that a uh, crocodilian will more like a warmer temperature or in like more more likely exhibit in the lower latitude. So the the occurrence from Taiwan here have reinforced uh, their wide distribution during the Pleistocene in East Asia of the total female. And we also suggest that because uh, Taiwan's fossil a bit, are a bit older than the Japanese fossil. So we also suggest maybe the total female or this lineage may originated in Taiwan or like in the eastern part of uh, Asia continent, and then and then enlarge and it maybe evolve with a uh, Jenkins or ceramic physiology. Thus, they can make them a uh, diaspora northern to the Japan. And oh yeah, and also uh, for our specimen dog fragment, we still try to do the phylogenetic analysis. Uh, so I didn't have the detail detail method here, but yeah, we take 
we take the coding and the the sheet from the the sheet from the previous study, including from like Ijima, the Hanisukas, and also Pongusukas, and we, and we do the analysis and we we separate it into into two analysis. One is including in all characters. Another one we inactivate the postcranial character with only score skull characters are, are analyzed. And the first analysis we found that uh, our total female Taiwanicus has cluster and form a monophyletic mono, groups with other East Asian taxon, including Pongusukas, Team of Sciences, and also a uh, Hanyusukas. And in the topology of this analysis, you can see a uh, Gavialoid and Tomistomine are separate. Uh, Tomistomine is more closer to croc crocodiloid. And in the second analysis, you can see we, we show a different result. In the whole topology, you can see the Tomistomine and Gavialoid are more closer. They form the mono monophyletic Gavialoidia. <laughs> and, and, and in the East Asia taxon, including T. Taiwanicus, they are all clustered together to show monophyletic groups. And this is very interesting because until now in the crocodilian uh, phy phylogeny, especially for mo uh, morphology, morph morphological base, evidence base, we still cannot uh, resolve this phylogenetic corundum because uh, in the molecular evidence, it shows that extentomistomas and gavrios have a more closer relationship. They should form as a gavialidae. However, in morphological and fossils evidence, we found that uh, Tomistoma and its extinct relative are more closer to the crocodilus. And but in research, but in recent research, including our research, we have found that uh, some sometimes the topology can uh, perform the a uh, whole topology which consists of uh, tomistomites and the gavialoids, gavialoids as the mono monophyletic gavialoids, including in the in the Ijima and Kobashi's research and also the real and Manian research. However, and also we found that uh, Pongusukas and Tota Femia, they should maybe shouldn't be belongs to uh, uh, East, East Asian mono, monophyletic groups and very endemic, endemic to East Asia. Though in the another another analysis in real Manian, the Tota Femia and Pongusukas is from as a ladder topology. So I, st I still need more research to and more analysis. But however, including the recent discovery of Hanyusuka, we have found that this East Asia lineage, like including the character we have told we have uh, mentioned before, the seventh seventh maxillary tooth is the largest. And recent discovery also found that Hanyusukas have some paterical bullet, which is very inflated paterical bullet, which is very uh, similar to the extern gario. So we think that maybe this this uh this is is a is Asia gario, including Pongusukas, Tota Femia, and Hangusukas, may, may belong to an endemic East Asian lineage. And thus we still want we want to know more about the paleodiversity of this cross. And and also not only this cross, also like including alligator sinensis, the whole uh crocodilians paleodiversity in Taiwan and in East Asia. And you can see that uh, for the records in Taiwan, there's still a large gap in Pliocene. There's no fossil records here. And so it has, it has uh, implied there's still a, a, a lot, it's, it's still a mission to find more fossil here. And also uh, for like, you, some people maybe uh, argue that total female Taiwanicus are very incomplete, but we have now, we still, we, we have now known there's many specimen now uh, curated in different museum and they are both, uh, they are all uh, co collected from the Tainan and maybe a discrete description of this fossil in the future may elucidate this issue. And also we have other potential to find more crocs Fossil in Taiwan because you can see the the map on the right is the that's the uh that's the sedimentary rocks distributed in Taiwan. You can see it in the western part we can we have rock from Pleistocene to Miocene. So they have this this still show potential of finding more crocs fossil here. And here I will also uh also quickly show the the one uh which we are currently researched from Penghu Channel. It's it's also my uh master thesis. Uh, in uh, this is a post posterior cranium of the of the tomistomai, and 
in in our current research, maybe we think it's a new species, and we are uh, are now prepared manuscript to send to the journal, maybe in recent. Yeah, so, and also uh researching this uh cro crocodilian pest from uh, cro from the past Taiwan, we also want to know why crocodilians have gone and extinct from the East Asia in Taiwan. For example, uh, in Japan, previous studies suggest that they like, mapping the crocodilian records with the uh, glacial interglacial period. And it found that uh, crocodilian records in the Japan are only appears on interglacial. And in glacial, maybe there's no crocodilian here. So I just suggest that maybe crocodilian have demise in the glacial period and then and then come back in after the interglacial. And in Southern China, in the recent discovery of Hanyu Sukas, they have found that they have some cut on the skull of the Hanyu Sukas and also on the on their vertebrae. It suggests that maybe in the past, maybe just like a thousand years ago, humans and Hanyu Sukas have uh, many uh, have met, have, met, have many fight, and then this this maybe. The, the, the extinct of Hamish because maybe is the human induced extinction. However, we still not know the scenario in Taiwan. So, so like for example, there's still many possibility of uh, extinction of crocodile. For example, the recent recent research uh, they have in Australia they have uh, shows that the the potential of the habitat lost of the saltwater crocodiles in northern Australia because of the sea level rising. So we do not know maybe, maybe whatever in Taiwan, the crocodilian extinction may be due to the climate or even uh, anthropological uh, activated or even like habitat loss. We still need more fossil and research to, to find this answer. And we hope that the, the, the extinction of Taiwan's crocodilians can also give the clues to the megafauna extinction in Taiwan and also in Asia. So summary of uh, uh, crocodilians have, so we, they have, we have only one extant species, extant species, uh, alligator sciences in the East Asia, but they have a more diverse history and distribution in East Asia. And there's a, a, even a endemic, endemic lineage extinct, when extinct. And our re recent re-examination of Tomis Toma Taiwanicas has referred it as a total female ta Taiwanicus. It's a new combination. And this also suggests that total female lineage may have uh, originated in Taiwan because of its older older geological age. And then they may they may become larger and dispersed to Japan. And our phylogenetic analysis also suggests an East Asia gharial lineage, this their lineage. And more research should elucidate crocodilian extinction in Taiwan, along with other Pleistocene megafauna. Yes. And this is my talk, and I would like to thank uh, many museums for providing us to observe the specimen, and also like also also uh, an S an, an STS from TC from Taiwan for providing the pro provide providing the funding, and also I would like to thank my master ma master uh, master advisor Zheng Shoutai for leading me for in this uh, Taiwan's crocodilian project. Thank you for everyone, and feel free to ask any question. Thank you so much for the talk. That was awesome. Uh, it was great to great to hear it and great to learn more. Um, if anyone has any questions, you can go ahead and send them to the questions at Paleo Perks post, um, and uh, we can then go ahead and share those into the chat. But to start us off, um, we do have a question. Actually, one moment. Okay, so just so we can have a screen up. Oh, sorry. Okay, so our first question is, I'm going to share it in the chat now. Uh, thanks for the talk. And uh, this person asked, what are some key morphological characteristics that can be used in crocodilomorph phylogenetics? Uh, so I guess, yeah, maybe not everyone in the audience is, uh, you know, an expert in phylogenetics or crocodilomorphs. Yes. Uh, yes. So there, are there any, you know, very key specific things that, uh, you know, a researcher could 
could look at or look for? I mean, uh, in our current data space, database in Crocodile Morph, uh, we can see, um, I think most of the character we use are, uh, most most of them are Scott characters. And so some uh, some researchers have recently uh, more concerned about postcranial researchers. And if we uh, if uh, if we want to know about, uh, I mean, the key morphological character, uh, I, 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 I think it's it's more like distinguish distinguish uh, different uh, different groups or like this. Uh, I mean, because some people always think the crocodilians are living fossil, but if we look if you look at the evolutionary history of crocodile morph, you can see there's many uh many never changed in their in their um in their evolutionary history so i think if you look if you want to use the if you want to find a morphological key morphological characters in crocodile morph phylogenetics i mean it's very complex if it consists of many characters yeah great well that thanks that's a great explanation so uh thank you okay i will post the next question that we have into the chat. OK, this person asked uh, or said, great talk, and then asked, you mentioned crocodilian extinction related to interglacial and glacial periods. Could you elaborate yes. on the mechanisms linking climate change and extinction for crocodilians? Yeah, uh, I think uh, some if we talk about the mechanism uh, in sociologically, we know that crocodilians, uh, they cannot tolerate a very cold temperature, especially at the winter. If if the temperature are maybe below to the zero degrees, maybe, maybe below to the, I think, not, not, uh, I think 10 degrees, 10 Celsius degree, their, <clears throat> their bodies will become uh, more dangerous. So, so some not previous uh, climate models also also, uh, speculates and model which place uh, maybe crocodilians cannot survive. But in current Taiwan's temperature, I think it's not very it's not that cold for crocodilian to extinct. I think they still can maybe uh survive in this like southern Taiwan because it's warmer. So it's very curious why they were all gone from Taiwan. And in climate change, uh, mod climate model uh, in nowadays Taiwan, we still not know much about the paleoclimate data, especially uh, because we're uh, in in our pay in the research in Taiwan. There's not many 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 research about like macroflora, and we cannot use the we have no data to reconstruct the climate. So I think it's at this moment it's hard to uh, know this. But yeah, we 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 are hoping to find more collaboration in this issue. Very interesting. Thank you. Okay, our next question comes from Kay Sender. I just shared in the chat. Uh, and this question reads, with so many large crocodilians being present in Taiwan, does the dental apparatus of the crocodilians hint to any sort of niche partitioning between them? Oh, yeah, it's a it's a it's an interesting question. And I will I will I would like to talk because uh there are some people I have noting that in total female Taiwan because uh, we have mentioned uh, the, the the situation uh, the sorry how should I say the the location of the medial medial occlusal pit but at 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 this moment we still not very know much about why the medial occlusal pit is more medially in the Taiwan species because uh, if we look at the list of occlusal pits in crocodilians you can see like in alligator is a uh, overbite, yeah. So the occlusal piece is more medially, and in most croco crocodilians, crocodilian, uh, they are they are uh, they are crossing they are crossing together. So we we'll not know why the medial occlusal piece appears in Taiwan species. Maybe maybe we we suggest there's some overbites more overbites uh cl closing mouths, but we're not sure now because the fossil are very incomplete. Yes. Ah, that makes sense. Thanks. Yes. Okay, we still have some questions coming in. Uh, and just a reminder to the audience members, if you have any questions, uh, you can send them to the questions at Paleo Perks host. But for now, we have a, another question. Uh, this one is an, from an anonymous person. Uh, 
does the existence of this genus or species in Taiwan have any major implications for paleo ecosystems of Taiwan? Yeah, that's, that's great. That's a, that's a great question. Uh, because uh, in the paleo ecosystem from Taiwan, uh, from now we have two two sites, two sites that have discovered many vertebrate fossils, including uh, one is Penghu Channel, they have like uh, the alligator and also the one, the, the new gario I'm now, uh, I'm going researching. Another one is the Chouzhen. And I think uh, we're not, but I think uh, in this, this crux in the, in the river system now, I think they are the, they are the largest predator at, one of the largest predators at the at the at the paleo ecosystem. And also we are curious because uh curious about whether these crocs in Taiwan at the moment uh they are like more estuarine uh, or like oceanic or even or more like in living in the in the in the in the water bed. I mean because some some we know some crocs can some crocodilian can swim across the ocean. So we are still not know what what the Tota female and also like Kangsukas and Pemsukas, this lineage, they have like more likely uh ex exhibit in ocean or in the terrestrial ecosystem. And maybe if if we know more about this, they will they will suggest a totally different uh result in this issue. Great, thank you. Okay, we have another question uh this one is also from k sender yes okay uh and this question reads do you find any sort of invasion and succession of thomas domids and other crocodilians from mainland china if yes does the timing of the invasion correspond to any major climatological or uh, ecological event oh this is a fine any question another from timing uh, I think because uh in East Asia uh if we if we only look at the list Thomas Tomai I think the first records it can be traced back to the Eocene uh Mami Sukus from the southern south uh, southern China but it relationships of um must uh are not very close to the like Hami Sukus and Tota Fimea. but we not we all uh, for the crocodilian evolution of diversity we are now know that at Eocene, Eocene and the uh, Miocene, they have the diversity are more higher. So maybe that they're just uh, very associated with the warmer temperature. But with, for the like uh, Pliocene or after post Miocene uh, records, it's still not no a uh, layer evolution or maybe links to any uh, climate, climate, climatological or ecological event. It's still not no. Great, thank you. Okay, we still have a couple more questions. Uh, yes. And so here is our next one. So uh, do you have any ideas on how this research could specifically inform megafauna extinction in Taiwan? I mean, I know you kind of uh, mentioned that yes. briefly, yes. but I, do you have any more like, let's say speculative uh, ideas or, or anything, you know, without giving uh, away any, anything? In my, in my last PowerPoint, uh, you can see, in also because I I mean it's it's very fast but I, I would like to say that because uh, in Taiwan I think the terrestrial vertebrates especially like uh, the mammals or reptiles their size are more smaller than other like terrestrial ecosystem other mainland ecosystem and some large animal including like uh, uh, uh like Paloxodon or the elephant, the, the mammals, yeah. And like the rhinos, the cross, these large animals are all went extinct. So I think, well, I'm not sure, but I just guess maybe maybe they still have the size selection here, but we don't, we still do not know about, as well, about, we don't know much, yeah. Awesome, thank you. Okay, and then, uh, this will be our last question of the day. Uh, and it reads, uh, is there a particular reason which allowed uh, for such large megafauna coexisting at the same uh, ta Taiwan site? For example, was the climate highly encouraging for these megafauna or any other you know, factors that you might think? Oh, yeah. Uh, it's the, uh, honestly, in the 
in the Pleistocene. East Asia, we also found like other megafauna, like if, for example, in China or in Japan. But we have, but however, uh, in our recent research in Taiwan, we have found less of so many fossil. Maybe they are different from from previous notes in China and Japan. So we still want to know whether maybe uh, this part, uh, the diversity is different from each area. And also I would like to emphasize that because in um, when people talk about uh, megafauna extinction, people are often linked with uh, mammals, but they are, uh, we are seldom think of the reptiles, for example, these large crocs. And yeah, so I would also want to know the 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 patterns or the the extinct patterns of the events of the paleo like this uh reptiles in the Pleistocene megafauna what what's play the roles of it yeah great thank you what a what a great answer and you know especially to to wrap up the Q and A yeah um yeah so again uh thank you so much for uh, such an awesome talk and. With that, uh, I'm going to kind of go over some of the last announcements before we kind of transition into a little break and then tea time. So again, thank you to everyone in the audience for joining us today. Um, you know, in addition to the speakers, it's really the audience members that kind of make uh, make Paleo Perks what it is. So we want to thank you all for uh, coming out and attending. And of course, we want to thank our speaker uh, for giving such an awesome talk. Um, Again, this was shared in the chat, but please fill out the weekly feedback form so that we can learn a bit more about who attended today's seminar. And we can also kind of work to improve the seminar and uh, kind of make it uh, to, so it can we can best kind of address the, the desires and the needs of the paleo community. Uh, just a little reminder that next week on the 7th of November at 1500 UCC, uh, we'll be having a presentation about the transition from academia to a government laboratory uh, given by Christine Chen, who's at Lawrence Livermore National Laboratory. Uh, so that'll be an interesting talk. So we'd like to formally invite everyone here to um, attend, attend that meeting. And just another reminder that we are currently looking for new people to jo join the Paleo Perks Leadership Committee. Uh, you get to kind of help run seminars and contribute to this initiative uh, and work with an exceptional group of people, both in the leadership committee and also working with the other speakers. Uh, and so, of course, it's a lot of great experience. And uh, yeah, you just get to meet a lot of really awesome people. So uh, again, the applications for that are going to be due on November 8th. And that application link will be shared in the chat. And we would like to whoops, encourage everyone to attend. And our slide, there we go. Uh, we'd like to encourage everyone to apply. And, well, oh, having some technical difficulties here. Okay. There we go. So now, uh, after this, we'll be having tea time with today's speaker. Um, and again, this is just an informal setting uh, where we can talk about, uh, you know, research, but also kind of research adjacent things in a more relaxed setting and uh, to kind of have, uh, act as a little icebreaker. The question of the week is, what is your favorite animal with scales? So you can think about that. Uh, and we'd like to invite everyone to come to tea time. And so we will have a two minute, uh, a two minute break here. And uh, yeah, we will all see you in two minutes. And uh, yeah, you're welcome to bring any paleo pets if you have them. And if you're leaving us now, then thanks for coming and have a great rest of your day. <laughs>